again, Coach Purdy, Tyler. You see next to the banner over here, we got somebody else in the room who's made his way in and out before, as all the children have at one point in time. Always do the uh, microphone check. Always sounds weird. But, um, so we're going to start off with a little guest segment today. Uh, this kind of works two ways. One, you know, kids always want to be on, and uh, it's our show, so if my kid wants to be on, I'll let him be on. No, but um, also... It kind of works, you know, we've been doing a little small interview here. Uh, still, in the worst got other people have committed this and they want to do it. We've just got to figure out a time. And I think some of those would probably be uh, some more Call -in type phone interviews, yeah. Skype interviews, FaceTime interviews, whatnot. I've been playing around with uh, some screen recording things. And I might have to do that on uh, another computer. But we'll, we'll get that kind of stuff figured out. But um, for those you see in the back here, we've got Devin. And he's got something on his arm. So... If you can see it over there, can you can you wave that at all over there? Huh? No? Kind of, sort of, is it moving? All right, so that little orange thing over there on his arm. Um, first off, Devin, where'd you get that? Uh, Greenville. Greenville. So why don't you come in a little bit closer so in case we can hear you on the mic over here. All right, not Greenville. Oh, well, you got the cast in Greenville, you're right. All right, yeah. so. Techni yeah. Technically speaking. Okay. All right, come on. All right. So you got the cast in Greenville, but where were you when this happened? Come on over here. Limestone. Limestone. What were you doing at Limestone? Wrestling. You are wrestling. All right. So really this is, Devin's been a long time member of our youth program. And I'm trying to get you situated here so it's not all awkward. All right. You can sit here just for a second. All right. So long time member of our youth program. Uh, over at the high, Viking 7. You know, uh, I guess you could all say he's been cerebrus trained as well. He's been... Um, you know, in the garage working out with me forever too. But, so how many tournaments have you been to now? Two. Two. So with our youth stuff, you know, we kind of let our kids kind of choose. We've always given them the option to, you know, if you wanted to go to a tournament, go to a tournament. And this is the second time it's worked out that he got to go to a tournament. He was actually winning his match and, you know, kind of came down wrong on his arm and, um, you know, it and it broke. It broke right over here, right above the elbow. And when we were talking to the doctors, they said that's the most common kid's injury or, or bone yeah. break. Um, comes from any time you fall, really. You, you fall, you brace your, uh, and the rest of your body just keeps going. You see with kids falling out of trees, off of bikes. Um, you can trip and fall and do it. But really, just any time you're doing anything uh, athletic in yeah. general. And so... What I want people to see is that, like, yeah, he got hurt wrestling, but this could happen anywhere. This could happen on the basketball court. You mm -hmm. can trip over a base, you know, running your bases or in the outfield. You know, this is a fall injury. It you take a wrong to... cut in football and blow your, yeah. blow your knee out. Yeah. But this particular injury, uh, you know, is just a fall injury. It happens, and there's nothing you can do to not have that happen or whichever. I mean, yeah, obviously, learn to fall different ways or do different things, but... You know, um, when people see that you don't have to be scared of it, you know, type yeah. thing. It, it it can happen. It does happen, especially with athletic people. But a couple questions for you, Devin, as you make faces at yourself and the, the stuff over here. Yeah. What did you think of the tournament before it happened? Okay. What did you think of the tournament before it happened? It was okay. Oh, it was just okay? All right. So what made it just okay? I know there's things as a, as a kid, and that's what I kind of wanted your perspective. Waiting to... Um, weigh in, waiting to wrestle. So those are the things that you didn't like about it, huh? Yeah. Okay, and this is what I want to throw out there, just uh, as, you know. Did it have a clinic? They did have the clinic or didn't? Didn't. Yeah, they did. They were talking about, do you huh? know what the clinic was? I thought. Well, they were talking about passive wrestling and stalling and the differences between those things. So when they were kind of going over some of the rules, that was the clinic. Okay? You remember that part now? Yeah. All right, so maybe not having necessarily... A like clinic a, like yeah, you're like used to, like clinic. like somebody comes in and shows you moves and stuff like that. They didn't. Have, they kind of had a rules clinic. Okay, so those are things that I, I agree with from yeah. uh, a spectator viewpoint, from like a parent with small children and like just waiting on things. That's what is, we do every year. Yeah, uh, it's Dorman. Yeah, and it's kind of different with uh, with kids and stuff. So, all right, what did you like about the tournament? Getting the opportunity to wrestle. Getting the opportunity to wrestle is a big one. That's awesome. Uh, did you like getting a chance to like wear your singlet? And yeah. Did you like getting to hang out with uh, one of the high school guys that was there yeah. with us? Okay, so you like being around it? Mm -hmm. That's fun. Did you see any other good wrestling while you were there or get to watch some stuff? That was kind of cool. Yeah. A few matches in there? Alright. So, 
if the arm didn't happen, do you think you would have had overall a good day or a bad day? Okay day. Okay day? Why just okay? Uh, being out on the mat all day. You think it's a long day too then? Yeah. Yeah? So what would you think? Do you think that should be shorter days or longer days? Shorter. Shorter? What, should, what else could they do to make them better? Stop and get a snack every once in a while. Okay, so you want, all right, so snacks, yeah. shorter days. I don't know, I just kind of find it interesting to ask about the the, the younger yeah, athlete's but, perspective on it. You know, yeah. Like what kind of stuff makes them enjoy it or, or, not enjoy or not enjoy it or, you know, things like that. So, other than the arm thing, would you do a tournament again? Uh, maybe you, not until middle school. Maybe you want to wait a little bit longer now? Yeah. Now, is that just because of the having the arm? Yeah. Yeah, so it gets a little worrisome. Okay, that's fine. But, um, overall, I think you did really well. Uh, I've seen growth movement. As I told your mom when we watched the, the video, um, you know, you looked a whole lot better from the first time you did. So, continuously getting better. And as long as you're having fun, and we went there to go have fun and just have a good time, and unfortunately, we had to call our day. A little short, which then resulted in a much longer day in a different yeah sense. in a different setting. So, but all right. Anything else you want to tell the people? Say nah. to the people. Nah. Bye. Nah. Bye. See ya. All right. I don't care. I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm out. Of here. Like, I don't care. I'm out. All right. We'll see you later. So, peace. So that's um, interesting enough. That's one thing that a lot of he mentioned it, and a lot of people that is their biggest <coughs> gripe about about wrestling tournaments is the what we call, we call it and we're used to it but we call it hurrying up and waiting yeah because you're, you're getting ready you're getting everything and then you got to wait for your match to come up you got to wait for the next round to come up and, and that's that's just the reality of the sport it's the reality yeah. of the tournament and i think like we said you you get used to it yeah that, in the yeah. sense that like you know we kind of like we're accustomed to or used to the grind of it that's what we do mm-hmm. and we just kind of like Accept it for that's yeah. what it is. You know, exactly. where you go to tournament, you're gonna you're gonna wait. You gotta wait for the wins. You gotta wait for this, and we accept it for what it is. Now, what I want to say though is like, hey, from that younger child's perspective and stuff, like, what can we do to make things better? Better. What can yes. we do to make this day faster, shorter? The rules clinic is kind of it's built in there, and it's for a good reason. And I actually learned something yeah. about Greco uh, with the passive rules and what they call passive wrestling yes, versus so is. stalling. Um, like they said, passive wrestling is like if you're just blocking off like mm-hmm. underhooks and you're fighting in there. It looks like hand fighting, but if you're doing it to the point just to keep somebody else from scoring, yeah. you're passive wrestling, which is like a caution warrant. So mm-hmm. you know, there's some things that I found that were interesting, but that was you know, again as an older. Um, an older person's perspective, a coach's perspective, an older athlete's perspective on how that works. Yeah. Um, you know, and what can we do to make it more enjoyable for the youth? So and stuff? with and I kind of like the hey, yeah. if there's gonna be a break, like kind of build a maybe a little snack time, like yeah. you know this, and that's more of like a, a team mom thing or whichever you know soccer tournaments, like whose turn is it to bring the snack rotation yeah. and you know just things like that. So with the whole rule thing though, I kind of. Uh, and you said you liked it. I mean, I like it as well, simply because, especially with at this younger age, mm-hmm. we do it with middle school, like we do it with that dormant clinic we go to every year. Yeah. We always start the because a lot of these kids, if they're wrestling for the first time, mm-hmm. the parents are seeing wrestling for the first time, so they can kind of hear the rules. <coughs> they can kind of get like, oh, okay, I understand yeah. what's going on. Um, so it's good. It's get it's good to get people aware of what's going on, um, so they're not confused, and that way they can kind of follow along. They have a you know they have an understanding of what's going on because you know if you're it's it's like it, when you go to turn on the TV, you're not going to turn on the Spanish TV channel if you don't speak Spanish and sit there and watch it because you don't know what's happening. You don't understand the language. You don't understand anything. Yeah. That's why I think the rules meeting um, before, you know, especially with the early ages or like the first few years, I think it's a great thing to have a rules meeting um, pre-tournament. Um, you want to go ahead and pull up flow over here? Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, the rules stuff is pretty cool. Uh, just learning a few different things. But... Overall, um, you know, I, I just, and I, it's not, I think the tournament was run, run run well, things got going, and once it got going, it was good, um, but it's just like an overall, you know, what are we going to do with wrestling as a whole? How do we make youth tournaments not that all-dayer type thing? Uh, you know, Devin's not playing soccer this year, my daughter is, but I've always kind of liked youth soccer in the sense of like, 
it's always kind of cool to go out there and you go out for like that hour you do your thing you're part of it and then you get to go home and you still have your whole day um i understand with wrestling that at some point we've got to get accustomed to you're going to plan on being in a gym and all of yeah, that event. yeah especially but, when you get to the high school level yeah and the matches get more drawn out it is but even at the high school level like who isn't happy as a coach or athlete when you get to go home at two instead of six you know i mean yeah. we can still have good things happen and still a shorter period of time so like you know um what do we need to do for that but at the same time though it i do think that we still have to build that up because you know ncaa's is three days you know and that's the three days the, long the, and that's a great thing and it, it builds up and you know all that kind of stuff so but the good thing is is also they you know it's like you said yeah it's three days and people are like oh three days that's a long time but the way they break it up you have like yeah, literally, like, yeah, the, on the championship side, if you're winning, you yeah. wrestle, like, what, twice? Maybe once, once, once first day, day twice yeah. second day, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not wrestling, like, all day long. You have time to leave and come back and do different things. Rest up But, and you know, it's more for the coaches and spectators and everybody else that spends all day in it. So, you know, the reality, though, is the youth tournaments and the summer tournaments and the freestyle tournaments aren't NCAAs. You know, it's yeah. not that exciting. You know, you're going to watch your kid wrestle. You're not going to watch... Yeah, NCAA is like you watch the summer tournaments. Like you're not watching everybody in the gym. You know, you go to watch your your, your team, your, your kid, your, whichever. Yeah. So when you're invested at the NCAA level and going to that, you're watching any mat that has good yeah, wrestling. Anything that's and got all of it, and you're on a swivel screen. and you're watching everything. So I do see where we kind of have to condition and get people used to that. But that's a long term goal. Yeah. But I think short term, I think we need to find ways to to make wrestling a little bit. Um, I guess viewer friendly, youth friendly, yeah. and capture things and make it. And also, let's be honest, we got to make it parent friendly because a parent's going to want to sign these kids up for things. If they have a choice of this or this, and when they're saying, hmm, X number of practices a week, they're both the same. Oh, wait, Saturdays. Let's see, this one we go for an hour, 45 minutes, and that includes snacks, yeah. warm, something else. Or Saturdays are, oh, wait, we got to show up before 8 for weigh ins. Wait till Don't wait till this. All right, we're lucky if we get out between two and four in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Hmm, I got other kids I got to deal. You know, that's where I I, I think that some of that could also know. be chalked up to, um, and, and you know, it's just probably opinion, but it's the fact that at least in this area, where if you go to like if you're in like Minnesota, mm -hmm. Iowa, places like that where it's more <coughs> well, custom, yeah. well, yeah, it's it's more accepted, and so parents are more open to it. Whereas like, around here in these parts, it's it doesn't have that. You know, where I don't mind being in a gym all day long, yeah. there's a part of me that won't lie. I mean, I don't mind getting home to see the rest of my family, or I know my well, wife enjoys it when I get home earlier yeah. because I can help out with the, with the other kids and things like that. So that's just kind of where I'm throwing that out, you know. And we've kind of had this discussion before about youth and everything else, and I think we could probably rehash some of those things yes, and ideas. Yes, youth, and I think youth we need, 100%. And I think we need to write that out and kind of write yeah. some things out too so we don't, like, get off on these... uh Shreveurst um, Wrestling Tournament. 2019. Yeah, so if we don't go off on all these different tangents on under things about yeah. the wrestling. But overall, I enjoyed the tournament. Coach Rebels did a great job. Um, you know, the athletic trainer, I believe her name was Bree, did a great job helping Devin out when we did have our accident. And, you know, I mean, overall everything was top notch and I was very pleased with everything. Uh, I would go back to it. You know, the, the fixes that we're talking aren't tournament specific. We're talking about like youth specific in general. Yeah. Um, so, but overall I thought it was, it was a cool deal. And, you know, uh, I, I hate to see my son get hurt. Part of me kind of thought I failed at doubly, like I failed as a parent and I failed as a coach when you see that type of injury and that thing happen. But then as the, the weekend progressed and talking to the different doctors and just things going on, you know, I could have felt that way just as my kid trying to catch my kid riding on the bike, you know, or, you know, playing around outside. So, it happens. you know, it, it happens. It won't lie, it sucks, but it happens. And, you know, we got to just like anything else pick up and move on and you know and, yep. and see what else is the next thing we got to do so, so before we get into the wrestling news let's go ahead and um let's go ahead and put our plug in <coughs> uh, for right now we'll probably put it in at the end of the episode as well yeah that's what um, i was gonna say let's make sure we yeah put a little note on here sticky we stuff. um for those i posted videos last week about it so, and i was gonna say yeah. yeah i still gotta get put those four oh yeah 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 i'm trying to figure out folder. i used a new microphone um it's not okay. my, it wasn't my usual microphone it was a usb mic that we had there and i'm trying to figure okay. out how to strip the usb 
audio, but um, okay, because I listened to them and I was gonna like put a little blurb in in between each yeah, one yeah. and then like mash, mash it up it all into together. like a, so yeah, you know, since you put them all out at one time, kind of throw the yeah another subcast episode that's coming for you guys mostly. So for those of y'all who don't know, yeah. I uploaded what was it like four or five videos? It was like and, four. Yeah, and, and the video I, I uploaded, I talked about yeah. briefly about your light bulb episode, but I didn't want to like say yeah. what happens because like you know it's yeah, that, that it's episode, spoiler, you know, but, but yeah. Um, yeah, we uh, one of the first videos I posted though was a it was an announcement video. I wouldn't even consider part of a subcast. It was just an announcement. We yeah, um, but I wanted to put it on there too. Yeah, I mean we I mean we still will. We're still gonna plug it on here, obviously. Yeah. Um, and we got a few other ones that might be working in the in the background right now. But right now we are actually officially sponsored by um, uh, Roll Soap, and we've actually got a cool little coupon code. You can go to www.etsy.com slash shop slash Roll Soap, and the coupon code is Cerebrus. And you can get, I think it's like 10% off your first purchase. It's great soap, um, especially for you wrestlers out there. You get on these mats, you get ringworm, staph infection. This really helps prevent a lot of these things. It helps your skin stay healthy, uh, keeps it clean, gets the mat nasties off of you. Um, keeps your, it also keeps your skin very like elastic. Like whereas you use like um, regular soap, you know, in the shower or something, mm -hmm. it dries your skin out. It's got these phosphates in it. Um, whereas roll soap does not. It's very natural. It's made from natural ingredients. Um, like coconut oil, hemp oil. Um, and we got one called warm, or they have one called warm cinnamon that's actually got uh, cinnamon bark in it, so it, it acts as an exfoliation as well. Um, smells it smells amazing, and I love it. Um, I've actually got a he's got a care package waiting for us, and we're gonna be we're gonna be waiting. I'm gonna once I get the care package, I'm gonna send some to uh, Coach Purdy here. Let him try it out. It's, I mean, it really is great. I used it once because uh, it's a friend of mine. We trained together, and I actually got ringworm. It was the first time I ever had it, and it flared up real quick. And he's like, here, try this out. He's like, it's soap that I make. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll be willing to try anything. And it it got rid of it quick. It kept me clean. I would never had problems with anything after that. Um, I love it. I love the way it smells. So, yeah, just look it up. It's www.etsy.com slash shop slash roll soap. That's the end of the plug. All right, cool. And what we'll <laughs> probably do is we'll record a yeah. little segment and we'll put that in. Yeah, and we'll, we'll just have like a little item in that way. Get we'll it in there. So, but around. yeah, uh, I think it's kind of awesome. Uh, you know, we start off with little things. Somebody, you know, liked what we're doing enough. Uh, kind of also helping support mm -hmm. local, like I've said before. You know, support somebody else who's doing something, uh, putting a product out there that I think could be useful. It's a product that uh, I'm looking forward to giving a shot right. and trying out. You know, just uh, and having a sponsor and having somebody that says, hey. I like what you're doing enough to put our name on it, and I thought that was yeah. really cool. So, yeah, uh, somebody else wanted to do that, as you know, I want wanted to give them a shout out and you know let them know that we appreciate it, and hopefully you guys all get a chance to go out and you know purchase. It's kind of a weird thing, purchase some soap, you know. Um, Everyone uses but again, soap, Everyone. but again, supporting local and doing some different things, and you get ten percent off. So, you know, check it all out. Um, because Tyler, I know, was also talking about. Uh, Talking about some other people with some sponsorships. I'm still waiting to hear back on the email. I'm gonna hit this other guy back up on an instant message about some of the gear stuff because I hadn't heard back uh, after I sent him our logo for the shirts and whatnot. But uh, I thought their stuff looked cool, but I don't want to uh, brush them off yet. So once we still hear more from that, and also yep. you mentioned yeah, talking with another guy that has has the machinery, so or not machinery, but equipment to do like some of the sublimated material yeah. and stuff like that. So, we, you know, we're constantly working on those different things. I know you were talking about looking at somebody else for meals, other type of stuff. And, um, all happened within five months. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty crazy, crazy to say that. So, you know, it's really neat stuff. Um, but let's get into yeah, some let's get rise of the rest. This is why y'all came. And <clears throat> the big one that we talked about before was, uh, and it's kind of funny that it was the big one, you know, there were other people that were moving around, but DeSanto was, was the, the big name. Yeah. And they're like, where's DeSanto going? He's leaving Drexel. Yep. He kind of had his meltdowns, his fits. Um, my kids dropped something. Like yeah, he dropped some together. candy. Yeah. Um, some fits and stuff like that at... Uh, at NCAA's, he kind of got a, not kind of, he did get a lot of backlash for that. And, yeah. you know, he ended up, he's leaving Drexel, got the full release, good for him. And, you know, there was a, a list of names that were going around. And anybody who's listened to us, uh, this has already been broken, you know, I mean, we're not, we, we don't claim to be journalists. We are not here for breaking news. We're not going to scoop anybody on a story. If you're watching the top of my head, I'm cleaning up something that... Yeah, sorry, there's something on the floor, he's cleaning it up, so yeah, if you can barely hear... 
foot keeps stepping in it. All right, so, but you know, we're not we're not breaking we're not breaking news. We're not scooping stories. We're not journalists. We're not reporters. We're just guys that want to talk about something. We don't give we y'all predictions. We give y'all spoilers. I'm just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we like to talk about things, and you know, other people yeah. have expressed interest in the same things that we're interested in, and so we we like to record and like to show you. But you already know. DeSanto is going to Iowa. to Iowa, and, and yeah, you know, kind of like the fun stuff about talking about things like this is, you know, Tyler at first was like, I hated it. I hated. It. I did not think he would he would fit well at Iowa. And the more, um, as soon as I saw it, I completely went uh, retracted what I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I actually, I think I was going to be an interesting fit for him. Him and Lee, um, I figure him and Lee will be, you know, obviously they'll be in the the room together and they're going to mm-hmm. push each other. It's only going to make them them both better um but i think i and i'm starting to agree with you more i think it's it's exactly what he needs as far as that discipline it's going to give him one he's an impact player two um let's be real if you're a lightweight and you want to have aspirations of being great being great beyond ncaa's i mean iowa uh which see, I think last... this gives Iowa more, and not that they need any more. I mean, they're one of the greatest programs of all time, but this gives Iowa more um, recruiting power for more people now too, as well, because now they've got they've got DeSanto, they've got um, they've got Marinelli, they've got Spencer Lee, they've got um, their their returning people. points. I think is going to be second. Like yes. you know, how last year they already did like just returning points. Ohio State yeah. was there. It's Iowa this year, uh, especially how they showed out in NCAA's. You know, they got a lot of guys coming back. But I was going to say. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, back to the you know being a lightweight and going to Iowa. That's where you go. Yep. I mean, who are the last three world team members at fifty seven kg? I mean, we had yeah. Yeah, Tony Ramos. How many Ramos? Who got beat by? Um, we also have. And who did you get beat oh, by? Dan Dennis, Dan which Dennis, created yeah. the whole then, the whole soap opera thing, which yeah. was I hated it for Tony and how all that kind of went down yep. and the like the split. But I thought it was good for wrestling in the sense that it was news, it was drama, and things went on, and it and it brought attention to it, which I thought was cool. Yeah. Um, you know, just to anything to draw attention to wrestling. And then after that, who won this last year? Who was the and Gilman yeah. was the team member and Gilman. placed silver. Was, so uh, which, you know, the last three world team members at the low weight at fifty seven were all Iowa people. So it just Iowa's producing mm-hmm. the lower oh, weight yeah. guys that are going to be the thing. I mean. It's kind of built that way. I mean, look who the coaches are. I mean, yeah, I mean you Tom and Terry them. Brands. I mean, uh, they, yeah, they got Morningstar in there who's great with recruiting, but, I mean, like, hands-on, like, little weight guys. Yeah. I mean, that's the place to go. If you're a little weight and you want to go and you want to be successful yeah. past NCAAs, look, I, I don't see how you can say don't go to Iowa. Yeah, I mean, and then you look at maybe – I mean, there's a few other places that have some solid guys. I mean, oh, I mean, I yeah, say, I mean, there's but, always going to be solid guys around. I mean, I'm around, but, yeah, like, if you want to be um, – I don't want to, I hate to use this word, but if you want to be elite at this these lower weights, yeah. I mean, I don't see and that anywhere else. Mean, yeah, and that doesn't mean that you know Tomasella from Ohio State yeah. or uh, Darren Cruz isn't going to be good. Yeah, we're not or, sliding them by no or means. Or any but, of the lightweights at yeah. Penn State or anything like that. I'm just saying, but uh, right now with, with the track record, what's out there? Like it's, if you just look at the last it's three facts. World, it's world, facts. the last three world team members at 57 yep. kg, you know those are the guys that have uh, kind of held the the chokehold on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still consider Tony Ramos that because even though he's at UNC now, just because you know I mean he was at Iowa and that's where they kind of get the start with that. You know, um, there Speaking were of Ramos. I I just had a flashback today of um, I forgot who I was talking to about it, but we were talking about the whole Tony Ramos, the way he used to make eye contact with his opponents. Oh, the stare and, was yeah, the awesome. Stare, he had the stare. mean yeah. stare. So yeah, that's sorry. It's just a little side note, guys. I I digress. Oh uh, yeah. And then the other one. I'm gonna reach across here okay. over here. But the other one that I thought was big news, just in the sense that I hated that they dropped their program. But um, how did you say his name? Where did he go? Do-do-do. The guy from well, it was Eastern Michigan, yeah. Sedarian Perry. He is going to Old Dominion. So I thought that was kind of cool. He's yeah. still kind of sticking with that smaller program. The mid major there. What would you major? Yeah, mid major ish. Yeah. You know, Old Dominion. Um, but after All American and his school losing yeah. his program, I mean, he was in Michigan already. You know, I was kind of surprised that he didn't slot in somewhere with Michigan or Michigan State. Yeah, you know, um, so, well, not Michigan State. Michigan State has proven to seemingly not care in their. I mean, but I'm saying like you could get it, but like no, I mean, they like don't, Michigan or you could. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's I don't know, any num- any any big yeah. any big name could have picked up an All American because this thing about Desanto didn't even yeah. AA. Yeah, 
I don't, yeah. I don't think he, so. He didn't even AA, and he was a so you got an All American, like, a guy that's proven no, his caliber, yeah. and you know he's you know the school no longer is there, so obviously he gets the release, gets to go wherever. Uh, no knock on Old Dominion, but I just kind of was waiting to see his name at one of the. I thought somebody else was gonna be like, hey, we got a gem here. They don't even have a program. Yeah. Let's scoop this up, you know. And Old Dominion did that. They scooped up a gem. Got a great where, wrestler. Where is Old Dominion at? That's um, in. Um, let's look it up. I forget where Old Dominion's at because there's someone. Uh, Type it out again. Yeah. Trying to keep order of that. Let's type that one in. So kind of nice deal about having the computer. We can look things up like that. Um, yeah, Old Dominion University. It's in, in Virginia, North Virginia. Virginia. Ooh, yeah. that's a good wrestling state. <clears throat> oh yeah, good wrestling state. I mean, they and they get th- names, but you just don't yeah. always. I, I consider them uh, mid major. They, they got. They seem kind of like Ivy League ish. Um, was I? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, really good school. Um, that that area, education wise, and all that is really good. So you had that. And you had De, DeSanto going, um, and kind of leading into Ramos and UNC. I obviously want to talk a bit about the U.S. Open. Um, U.S. Open. I just was was great. There. there was a lot of things with it that were awesome. Um, a lot of great wrestling. I unfortunately didn't get to watch as much of it that I wanted to watch, just because obviously I spent that last Saturday and Sunday in the hospital because uh, Devin also had to have surgery on his elbow. They had to, you know, put that bone back together and they pinned it and did some stuff like that. So, but as I was falling over, you know, there was so much good wrestling that I watched the first day of Greco and things like that. And Greco was off, awesome, but I got to go back and there were matches. I've been slowly watching match at a time. You know, with the stuff. There was a thing on here. Um, <coughs> bless you. <coughs> Ooh, man, sorry. Yeah, I didn't get to watch as much as I wanted to either. Um, I was working literally all weekend, so I was I was having to keep up with clips. I was sharing the clips yeah. that I can um, see. Um, so, but yeah, we got the yeah, overview, we got videos, here. and you know, I've been coming back through, and I've been wanting to watch Anything things. Ramos. You know, uh, Ramos versus Dayton Fix. I thought it was going to be a great match. Here we um, go, right here. This was one of those Kyle Day, You know, Gable Stevenson it's versus Adam Coon. Mm-hmm. Did you see that? I saw that match. Yeah. And uh, um, but that, there were lots of people that were on there, and I know that's who you kind of wanted to talk about today. Yeah, I like wanted to swing, but yeah, I kind of wanted to briefly talk about him. Um, just one thing that I did take away from this, but I, I mean, everyone, anyone who's watched him wrestle, obviously, you know, he's, he's got a lot of potential. But Gable Stevenson, I mean, fairly young guy, he's a lot of potential. Junior um, eligible, him, yeah. uh, Dayton Fix, I think there was somebody else that are junior eligible. Yeah. Uh, that's an age thing, and they wrestled at the senior level event, so they basically wrestled up oh, out yeah. of their level. It's like taking, like saying the middle schooler who gets pulled up to wrestle high school, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of, he's wrestling out of his, yeah. his age group, you know, to compete. Just to, And, yeah. you know, Dayton Fix, he made it to the finals. Uh, I can't remember what Gable Stevenson placed, but he ran into um, Adam Coon. Who is and, an animal. Yeah, and he, did you see that match? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, so, so Kuhn, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I'm going to say what you're going to say. I say, you know, Kuhn came out with the win. Um, not a surprising win, no. but at the same time, it was like, it was one of those things that I think it was completely acceptable to say I'd put money on Adam Kuhn to beat Gable Stevenson. Yeah. But at the same time, if Stevenson were to upset him, I don't think anybody would have been like shocked, shocked. Like, I, he is almost kind of like the next coming yeah. at that weight. Like right now, I would have been I would have been shocked because he he still is young. So he's still got. I mean, he's he's, he's very, still young, but he's like, going to be a freshman next is, year. And is. I don't know if they've got anybody slated. I think. I mean, but Kuhn's also a giant. <clears throat> yeah, that's why that's why I would have been surprised. But no, I mean, Gable Stevenson. He's I mean, he's got tremendous potential, okay. and I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see him. And he's going to be at Minnesota. Minnesota. So, and Minnesota's been known for having uh, you know, some big guys over there. Brock uh, Lesnar being one of those. Brock Lesnar, and then it wasn't Kuhn, because um, Kuhn was at Michigan, but um, Nelson. Tony Nelson Tony was Nelson. the big guy that was, was there for a long time. So, you know, it, it's kind of like one of those things. It works as well. He went to a place that was notably known for heavyweights. It's just like if he was a little guy, I would expect he probably would have gone to a like in Iowa or something. But he chose his program. Um, one, I believe he's from Minnesota, mm-hmm. uh, which helps out, you know, the in-state thing and getting to choose that local college. But, you know, going to a university that is known for having good, big guys, you know. And I expect him to make an immediate impact. Um, you know, the the top-notch guys, you know, I mean, he said he hated that he's coming in after him, but 
And he's got a group of guys coming in with him, uh, Mason Parrish and a few others that are all going to be battling out for the next couple of years. Yep. And heavyweight's going to be exciting. I don't know, I'm not going to say exciting again, but like the excitement of heavyweight's not going to drop off that much without yep. Kyle Snyder and Adam Kuhn and some. And it's not going to be. It's not going to be too heavy guys going around just like. Yeah, these, these guys are athletic, yeah, quick moving, hitting guys. Single. So the trend that Gwizdowski helped start, and yep. then Kyle Snyder and all these guys at, at heavyweight position is going to carry on. And I think we've seen an evolution of the heavyweights within the last couple of years, starting with Gwizdowski and these guys, yeah. um, Todd Wallace and these guys taking shots and doing things. And it's just going to carry on, and I think it's awesome to see. And I think you know, Gable Stevenson is going to be one of the guys to carry that torch, where heavyweight is just going to mm-hmm. continue to be impressive to watch and continue to be fun to watch. You know, it's no longer yeah. the, oh, it's heavyweights. You know, it's not, it's it's not boring, super man. wrestling. Yeah, no, it's, you know? it's, it's going to be fun to watch. Now, do you want to go ahead and talk about this one? I've got a kind of highlighted right here yeah, uh, this was one that I um, it was one that Iron I didn't Man get to it. see but it, it was a spoiler for me somewhat like I just happened to see it on my phone I was yeah. like oh, I wanted to watch that but yeah. um, no um, the takeaway from that and I haven't watched all his matches was like Logan Stevers was the guy at 65 he's mm-hmm. a world champion at 65 uh, Iron Man came through and did great at this tournament and yeah it's one of our weights that we have to question who's going to be our guy at this weight when it's all said and done um and which leads to, I hope there's a way that Jordan Oliver, his suspension is finally up, which I love Jordan Oliver. He's going to be at 65, that we can find a way that he gets into a provisional wrestle-off to get into this whole series of tournaments. Because the yeah. U.S. Open's not the... end all be all type. No, it's not the finals to select our world team trial. It's not the world team yeah. trials. Final X is this thing that is like going to be like the world team trials. But what they've already done was like, if you win the U.S. Open, you get seated here, and then there's yeah. a couple other things yeah. going on. And the, the whole bracket system, like when I look at it, it kind of makes sense to me. But when I don't have it in front of me, like I kind of get confused because yeah. it took me a little while to kind of figure it out. But having it in front of me and some of the cheat sheets, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But you know, that's a weight where I think you know we need our best guys in there, and I think mm-hmm. we need Jordan Oliver to throw his hat in the ring. Now, does he want to? Of course he does. But whether or not he can get that provisional wrestle off to get in there. Um, I think right now it's such an exciting time for USA Wrestling. Just, oh, just, oh, my gosh. I mean, the amount of talent that we have. Um, I mean, not that we haven't had it in the past, but, I mean, just, like, right now. Like, yep. now it's it's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, you got young guys. You've got older guys. Or I don't want to say older, but, like, you've got guys who have been there for a while. you got some veterans. And then mm-hmm. you've got kind of that middle that's, you know, just now finding – I don't want to say just now finding the group, but that they're starting to find their – the group in the, at this senior level. Oh yeah, so, um, and, and it is exciting. And talking about exciting wrestlers, like one of my favorite wrestlers, and I got him headed up over here, Kamal Bay. He's a Greco guy, and he is a kid, and he's focused purely on Greco. I wonder what his freestyle would be like, or what his folk style would be like. But oh my gosh, he's exciting. He's young. He throws bombs, literally, and he is so fun to watch. And I think he's probably one of our, well, really any of our Greco stars are uh, fairly underrated and are under-talked about in comparison to freestyle just because of the yeah. nature of what we do. But, like, you know, in other places, though, you know, Greco is almost, you know, equal if not higher esteem than freestyle. But uh, Kamal Bay, if you want to watch him exciting wrestling, type in Kamal Bay for the U.S. I and mean, he is exciting to watch. He's fun. He's young. And he's showing out for, for Greco. And I thought, hope more people get involved in Greco as well. So Greco Lives Matter. Um, Greco Lives Matter. Yeah, they do. Uh, <laughs> I've posted that before. Um, you know. Like, guess who's calling it? Who's that? Hey, Quasi. Well, let's put it <clears throat> Hey, man, what's up? Uh, give me a minute. We're in the middle of a uh, we're in the middle of the Cerebrus podcast, man. Go ahead and give your shout out. Quasi. Uh, All right. Say hello, man. Say hello. You're on. You're on camera. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, everybody. Sean here. Hey. Hey, what movie did you just go see? Say that again. What movie did you just go see? A quiet place. Beep. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, awesome, man. Uh, yeah, I'll give you a call back here in a minute. That's uh, funny. All right, bye. <laughs> what is he going to see at Quiet Place? I was waiting to hear Avengers or something. No, like that's that. what we're going to see tomorrow. Oh, okay. Me and Usher. All right. I'll talk to you about it later. Yeah. I saw it. Don't, uh, don't spoil it. No, 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 no. 
Anyone yeah. gets spo- anyone spoils it, you're getting thrown. No, and but we're gonna talk about it after you see it, and then um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, back to wrestling over here. Um, lots of great matches. Oh god, this is one that I've had queued up to watch. I haven't come back to watch it yet. Uh, Joe Clone, uh, Nashawn Garrett. That was amazing. They were that was supposed to be an amazing match. Like I've been literally like kind of going through and watching one match at a time, uh, trying to catch up on these things. But overall, the U.S. Open, great tournament, great wrestling. I wonder about which weights are we going to see a change of guard? Is somebody else going to take that spot? Who's going to be our fifty-seven person? Uh, will Gilman hold that spot? You know. I think so. uh, at, I hope so. Yeah, you know, and then you know, sixty-one. That one's kind of wide open. I'm like to see who fills in over there. Uh, Sixty-five is yeah, open with that. Logan Stever just, being out. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Seventy. That was James Green's weight. I'm not sure if there's anybody going to be uh, taking James Green's weight. Let me just see. Do, do, do. Let me go ahead and just click on the results thing here so I can get all the weights right. Yeah, so we got 57, um, 61, 65, 70. You know, 74 is going to be exciting. IMR won, uh, so he's kind of in the in the mix over there. Uh, 79 is a... Is a you know, I mean, but ooh. we know 74 is, is yeah. Burroughs' weight, but I still am excited to see the possibility yeah. of IMR wrestling Burroughs. 79, Dake has been on fire. His throws... His Derringer is good, but I mean... Dake has just been. Did you see that thing I shared that um, it was talking about? We've been trying to share more articles. Like we've been busy doing our training, but we I've been trying to share more articles yeah. on there. And so y'all guys been pretty good about doing that, yeah. sharing some stuff, keeping the sites active and whatnot. Just to keep, so. just to see what, like, get some opinions, get some, not even I don't want to say debates, but get some uh, yeah. talk going on. And um, but yeah, no, Kyle Dake right now is. We've said it. We said it last episode. We're gonna say it again. Um, Kyle Dake is by far our best world wrestler that has not won a medal yet. Who has not won a world medal yet? So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, David Taylor is looking phenomenal Magic there. Man, yeah. Um, as always. Ninety two. Jaden Cox looked great. Uh, I still want to see the super match between David Taylor and Jaden Cox after everything that happened over the Olympics with the Twitter and those two kind of beefing things out. Uh, Ninety seven. I mean that's Kyle Snyder's weight um you know i don't know if we have i want to see him be challenged in the sense that i want to see that weight continue to get strong but you know really right now i don't know it's kind of like uh 74 and um and 97 like you know, you know between him. jordan burroughs and you know i mean uh, i i'm fully confident kyle dake and david taylor um you know some of those matches i want to see About what close happens to a lock as you're going to get um, those two and then 125 oh and what Jeez, I, I can't believe we didn't even mention it. Like, who did Kuhn wrestle? Um, I hadn't, I hadn't had to. Yeah, do you the didn't see? Yet. No, I hadn't had a chance to go back and watch. I haven't made it all the way to the finals yet, so um, I've gotten. Adam Kuhn, Bradley. To, I know. I guess Kuhn. Um, I guess that was for the the sum, it was the quarterfinals. Did he wrestle him in? Uh, yeah. Go down. It's um where do you go, where do you go, where do you go? There it is. Yeah. Hmm. But uh Varner came back, went up a weight, realized that he was not beating uh Jaden Cox and or not Jaden yeah, no, he wasn't beating Jaden Cox or uh no Kyle Snyder. Wasn't beating Kyle Snyder. Uh so Jake Varner moved up to one twenty five, threw his hat in there. There it is, yeah. It was yeah. in the finals. I thought it was in the finals. But threw his hat in there. I thought he looked good for a guy kind of coming out of retirement and doing things. I don't know if he ever considers himself in retirement, but I thought it was a smart it's move. A retirement you know, I thought it was a smart move coming out of uh, Kyle Snyder's weight now and going up to heavyweight, but, you know, Kuhn just proved to be a little too much there. But I thought it was great this is to just see. Freestyle, or is this Greco too? Yeah, this is the results for a freestyle right now. Oh, you can change the results up there. Sorry. But, um,. Senior Greco, <clears throat> but I thought it was great to see Jake Varner back in there. I mean, I love Varner's as a wrestling shoe too. I'm like, this is how why, cool is it like this to is be? What I wanted to talk about. Yeah, but how cool is it that like you know you Jordan Burroughs the same way, but like he ain't give me yeah. wrestling. I'm like, hey, you're wrestling in my shoe. I don't know. Isn't that kind of cool though? Like to be, yeah. he's one of those guys that can say that. Like you're wearing my shoe. Wearing my shoe, man. Where's yeah, I, I just thought that was kind of cool. But I was I was like, thrilled like, to see like, Varner back. I uh, really liked it. 
It's like Michael know, J- playing against Michael Jordan. Everyone's wearing Jordans. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, yeah. I, I think I, I'm not a basketball guy. I couldn't tell you what people were wearing when Jordan was playing, but I would yeah. assume. Yeah, probably some Jordans then. Yeah, yeah. Probably the first sure. versions. Yeah, the ones and twos. But you know, uh, Greco freestyle or Greco yeah. senior. We won't spend as much time talking about. It. Maybe I'm doing a disservice to it as well. Greco lives uh, matter, coach. They do. But uh, <laughs> Ryan Mango, brother of Spencer Mango, who yeah. ran uh, the Greco scene for what seemed like decades, uh, Kamal Bay, um, Ben Provisor, or I don't know how to say his name, watch him, he is fun to watch, um, Robbie Smith, and then Robbie Smith at heavyweight, talking about a heavyweight chunk of people, I this dude's that. throwing fives He's on heavyweights, he's a bearded animal, he's throwing fives on heavyweights, and it's awesome, and then, guess what, he wrestled Adam Kuhn, Adam Kuhn, hats off to him, with yeah. both styles, Adam Kuhn in an interview, um, with Flo and somebody else had posted it he was like man I just want to wrestle and I was like dude I love him he was like I just want to wrestle I just so want to wrestle and about... build rockets that's that's his life goal yeah build build spaceships not just rockets like, Spa- you know, he's um, building everything he's going to yeah. wrestle in space so Adam Kuhn went made to the finals of both styles it's amazing and I thought that was just you know awesome you know uh, and I did get to watch some of the other um Greco matches yeah. and there were some fun matches. In I'm there. still trying to catch up, so don't like spoil anything. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, there, nothing too crazy, but yeah, I'm I mean, still trying to catch some fun up. matches in there. So, like I said, but go watch Kamal Bay. He's fun. Yeah. Ben Provisor. He was he was good to watch, and obviously Robbie Smith. So yeah. you know that was the Greco stuff. Now, what was kind of cool about this was there was an overload of wrestling in the sense that the senior women were also wrestling, and this was cool. Because where did she go? Adeline Gray is back after some surgery and some time off and some stuff. So it was fun seeing her get back out there and win it again. Um, There was one that I was kind of surprised that at 53, uh, Haley Agulo, or Agulo, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce her last name. Agulo. But she came out on fire, uh, qualified for the Olympics, and was Mm -hmm. beating a lot of people. And she plays second at this one. So... It's also another one. Women's wrestling is on the come up. Got a lot of good stuff. Don't Guess who? Did you see who's coming. getting another a women's program here in the state? Oh no, I haven't. Hey, hey guess same place that uh, Devin broke his arm. Limestone. Limestone. Limestone oh, College. D two. Cool, PC just got one. Yeah, PC. So the state of South Carolina is coming up big. PC has got Division One men and women's yeah. program. Uh, D two Limestone College already has a men's program. They had added some other yep. sports, and they are adding women's wrestling That's there. Awesome. And I thought that was huge. We're I gonna have to catch a match. Yeah, so I thought that was huge. I thought that was awesome. So good things all around coming from yeah. wrestling. So the senior women, and they also had juniors here at yeah, the, the U.S. Junior, Open. Now, junior Greco, junior I freestyle. think juniors is fun to watch. But at the same time, I've heard about some matches that were high scoring and just fun. But I don't know how. I'm going to process all that because I'm still trying to catch up on the senior style stuff. Yeah. So junior freestyle, junior Greco. I'm just gonna have to like literally kind of lead myself to the masses, look up the stuff, and see yeah. who who is there. We apologize for not like usually we're on top of this as always. I mean, as you guys know, but uh, like I said, we've been training for this race. <coughs> uh, you know, I'm training for the race as well. I'm training for a tournament before, like the week before. Um, doing that plus plus we're working a lot he's and he's you know he was at a tournament this weekend so this one we hadn't we hadn't actually had to ch- usually we, we didn't we didn't write out our stuff to it it was but. more or less just kind of game like we we I know me for instance I've been going back trying to watch what I can uh, mm-hmm. get caught up on everything um, so yeah but yeah no I mean there was a lot of great wrestling so yeah the US so, Open had a whole bunch yeah. of stuff it was it was awesome like I said it was almost too much in one tournament. I don't know how I would have been, even without being in the hospital, been able to watch all of it. Is I'd it still the, been catching up. So the 17th, I think it is, the 17th coming up, is, um, is Beat the Streets. Is that on the is 17th? It, is, it, is it the 17th? It's, yeah, uh, Beat the Streets yeah, on the 17th. 17th. So that's the that's one gonna be, that's going to be, be watching. You know, uh, that's the super match. Yep, super match. And I think uh, Jordan Oliver just got a match in there against yeah. a, a Russian or somebody else, so that'll be good. So... <clears throat> Flight time duels is always kind of cool, but and then I'm also excited to see, you know, uh, 18th through 20th, we have the World Team Trials Challenge, and this is the challenge to go wrestle other, uh, I think, I don't know, maybe it's, I gotta pull up the final X thing, but you got that, um, and then the final X is the finals of that World Team's, the, cha- the other challenge term is to wrestle against whoever are in the finals, and the, um, 
of the U.S. position. Yeah. So, like, people like Jordan Bros and those guys that are kind of there. already seated at, at their final X berth. Uh, those people that won the U.S. Open get to sit into the finals of the World Team Trials. And there'll be the challengers who go through the tournament will mm-hmm. wrestle them, and then that wrestle them. There'll be there'll be a wrestle off. It's an, it's an interesting go, way. Of and that. then they'll go to wrestle this. So um, lots of exciting stuff for our in season stuff. You know, and that's how I'm gonna call it. Our in season stuff was great. Uh, lots of good wrestling going on. Still good wrestling to come up. So you know, really just you yeah. know, it was just fun fun stuff all around. You know, minus uh, the the little hiccup having that. Um, you know. Be stuck in the hospital and miss some of this. Yeah, and deal with broken bones. I'd have much rather been watching wrestling than working a weekend. So yeah, yeah, you know, Mark. I had twelve hours. <coughs> you know, working twelve hours a day. I'd much rather be twelve hours in a gym. So, yeah, so. any day. Yep. But all right, guys. We just wanted to, like I said, record, get things back at you, get some, get some stuff on. Once uh, Tyler hits me up with those other episodes, I'll throw yep. the uh, little conglomeration subcast me talking with him as well. And you know, we're just gonna. Uh, keep on giving you guys the good stuff and uh, remember go hit up Etsy shop and uh, look up roll soap I'm sure if you just type in when you get to Etsy if you also just, just type in roll yeah. soap probably be the easiest way to, they could to do find that, their yeah. stuff too so I think pretty much everybody knows where it smells amazing Etsy. guys I love it and um, like I said looking forward to giving all the good products to go and we'll let you know how it all goes and tell them find a way to wrestle six yeah find and, some uh, way you know and obviously we've got Three weeks now until our mud run, so mm-hmm. hopefully we'll be back out with you, you know, at you least tell, once, if not little, twice. I'm looking a little you know, smaller right now. Um, I've been losing weight for that. Working on cleaning up the well, I have been cleaning up the diet already, but working on extra special the last mm-hmm. little bit here, trying to make sure to you know just do everything right and get it all going. Yep. So, all right, guys, we'll catch you later on. Bye bye. <laughs>